My mission is about spreading queer joy and affirmation is a lot more active than inclusivity. I prefer an affirmative approach, just making the world a, a more affirming place for queer and trans youth. Hi, I'm Linz. I'm queer and non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. I'm the founder and CEO of Queer Good Creative, where I make LGBTQ plus and social justice videos for kids and families. Um, I'm trying to queer mainstream children's media at the same time. So I'm going to be using a lot of vocabulary and concepts and ideas around queerness and sexuality and gender that are hopefully entry level, <laughs> but also are really going to move deeply into a queer space and a queer centered space. That's why I really like to use vocabulary that is explicit. And this is also the voc vocabulary that I use with young people. So yeah, really trying to understand kind of like the young person's idea of what's going on with queerness. And then yeah, tips and tricks for making the spaces that you're in more queer inclusive. So yeah, we're going to be talking about that and we can get into some of the practicalities of actually making your space like that instead of just kind of like slapping a safe space sticker and moving on. There are a lot of different identities within the LGBTQ plus IA 2SP um, community. A big reason why there are so many labels and identifiers is because there is such a lack of representation. And I think that at least for me, I feel so affirmed when I see myself reflected in something, right? And that has to do with media, but it can also be in something like a flag. So flags are very, very important, but no one is expected to know what every single flag means. Just uh, It's just about kind of respecting that and that people have different labels for who they are and that that is legitimate and valid no matter how you identify within the LGBTQ plus community. How, when to ask about and use pronouns. I think that for cis people in particular, sharing your pronouns anywhere, everywhere, even if you're just meeting someone the first time, hi, my name is blank. These are my pronouns. What are your pronouns? Just opening up that as a part of the conversation of who you are and how you want to start that relationship and that dialogue with that person. For queer people um, within queer communities, absolutely share your pronouns. I try to be respectful. Not every queer community is is trans inclusive either. So there's also that problem within the queer community and not a lot of spaces are safe for trans and non-binary people. So being cautious about folks who maybe aren't out, who aren't comfortable sharing their pronouns yet are in a different part of their gender journey. So yeah, that's really on like a case by case basis. But um, for me in working with young people and with youth, I like to bring pronouns up a lot, honestly, as much as I possibly can, um, because that's a little bit more of a learning environment. Gender is a spectrum. There are lots of people who identify in lots of different ways in their gender. Gender and sexuality are different. Uh, sexuality is about who you're attracted to and who you love and who you can love. Um, and gender is an internal feeling and how you express that internal feeling to the world. And there are lots of different gender identities, but there are also lots of different sexualities. So there's no one way to look queer at all. Can we talk about the abbreviation LGBTQ? It seems that they keep adding letters to it. Why is that? Is it just okay to say LGBT or LGBTQ or is this disrespectful? The only disrespectful way I could see people referring to this is LGB um, and taking off the T. There is a whole thing around that in trans exclusivity within the queer community. So make sure you got that T in there. Um, that's very, very important. Personally, I like to use LGBTQ+. Um, that's just kind of what I use. It's what my tongue and mouth are used to when I'm doing events like this. So there are lots of different ways to kind of put the acronym out into the world. And that's really kind of a personal choice of how you want to describe that. The most common I see is LGBT, LGBTQ, LGBTQ+, um, LGBTQIA, so intersex and asexual. Those are two very, very marginalized groups within the queer community, so they're important to center as well. But you'll also see other um, iterations of it. The only like offensive thing is if you're specifically trying to leave out part of the queer community in there, which can be very problematic and insidious. Is it okay to ask a person about their preferred pronouns? I, I like to talk about pronouns a lot. I think it's just a really, really wonderful in to larger conversations around gender, knowing that 
pronouns are super important, but they are not everything. They are a stepping stone to a lot of other conversations. So we don't want to like just stop at pronouns. That's like the same thing as the safe space sticker. There's a lot more to it. So I think what's important here is providing opportunities for people to share their pronouns that aren't necessarily pressuring them to. So really great ways to do this are like pronouns on name tags, pronouns in your email signatures, normalizing that throughout your organization, having that be a part of the email signature template that your organization maybe uses. There are a lot of ways to get creative about really just kind of integrating it and normalizing it, which is I think the most important part, so that it becomes something that is a, a behavior of your community. How can we help queer professionals develop their careers and encourage them to be their authentic selves? Should we also be teaching them to evaluate situations for safety to disclose personal identity information? One of the best ways to support queer people in your organizations and the spaces that you're in is to give them space with other queer people. That's kind of gonna be the biggest thing. And if you only have one queer person, you gotta look at something else. <laughs> you gotta like look at the whole picture because something's going on that isn't queer friendly and a queer affirmative and um, queer folks are gonna notice that and that's probably why. But also like things like, you know, building in behaviors that are queer affirming into your spaces. So like with the pronouns and there are lots of other ways that you can do that too. I mean, if you're talking about your company, if you are an HR person, like talking about what do benefits look like that center a queer and trans experience? What does healthcare look like for a trans person versus a cis person? What is family building like for queer people than it is for cis people? How are those actually overlapping? Plenty of cis and straight people use IVF too. So it's, it's thinking about it not necessarily as something completely separate as well. And like, oh, like how could this also benefit everyone, right? As an employer, how can we make our hiring processes more inclusive for the LGBTQIA plus community? I think that the biggest thing here is making sure that the places you're putting your job listings are you're, you're getting creative with that, looking outside of the box because a queer person might not be looking in the same places or might not be in the same places where you're advertising that job. So I think that that's like a big thing of like, not just letting people come to you, but also learning to really reach out to those to different communities. How can we model appropriate responses to discrimination that younger queer people may witness or experience? I think that it's it's just important to make sure that you have the best knowledge you have you can you can gain um, from those more marginalized people making sure that you're pulling forward those voices whenever you have the opportunity making sure that you're learning and you're participating in your own practice you know outside of your own privileges making sure that i have a really robust anti-racism practice making sure that i have people who in my circle who can call me in on stuff making sure that i am just very I think I have like a decent attuned brain to making sure that like I am being careful, not careful, but like, and not cautious, but like ultra aware of things. Like it is my job to make sure that I am up on discourses so that I can talk to you all about what is happening in those spaces. And I'm going to make mistakes. I'm absolutely going to make mistakes and like how to move forward in a lot of different ways because like I can't just be fighting for queerness. I can't just be fighting for transness. It's all interconnected and just having grace for ourselves, I think is really important and knowing that we're all on our own journeys of learning and understanding. Yeah, I think being aware of those growth edges is really, really important. I specifically do work for young children. So typically in the like elementary school and younger area, but I also um, speak to high schoolers and young, I'm a millennial. I talk to people my own age sometimes. <laughs>